Normally on a Friday, we do a weekly video. We do a deep dive into a big subject that's in the news. But today we're doing a short one specifically about SWIFT. It's the Society for Worldwide Interbank Financial Telecommunication. It was created all the way back in 1973 and it's Belgian. It serves as an intermediary and executor of financial transactions between banks worldwide. Now SWIFT doesn't facilitate the transfer of funds, it really just functions like a messaging system, sending payment orders which are then settled by correspondent accounts that the institutions have with each other. It doesn't hold accounts, it doesn't perform clearing, it just sends an absolutely staggering number of financial messages, 42 million a day on average. But leading up to Russia's invasion of the Ukraine, the threat of cutting Russia off from SWIFT was being called the nuclear option, the thing Russia would fear the most. But now, of course, it's very much on the table as the West fronts up to the reality that Russia, well, it doesn't give a damn about any of the sanctions so far imposed. But now there's this talk of Russia using crypto as an escape route. Is this realistic? And how would that even work? All of that coming up after these messages. Step Finance is the front page of Solana. Crypto moves fast with hundreds of applications and new things launching daily. Keeping track of it all is a full-time job. Step brings everything into one easy-to-use dashboard. Step's portfolio management dashboard enables Solana users to visualize, analyze, execute, and aggregate transactions across all Solana contracts at the click of a button. Step is built by DeFi Degenerates for DeFi Degenerates. Get started today by visiting step.finance and connect your wallet today. So here we are. It's war. US intelligence was right for once. And now Biden has announced a package of sanctions aimed at imposing devastating costs on Russia. But it's not cutting them off from SWIFT. At least not yet. And nor is the EU. Austrian Chancellor Karl Nehammer said that the suspension of SWIFT would affect the Russian Federation less than the European Union, arguing that Russia could use its own payment system, and secondly, it would immediately switch to Chinese payment systems. Now, many in the EU, including Germany, believe disrupting Russia's access to SWIFT would cause more damage to them than to Russia itself. German Finance Minister Christian Lindner said that would mean that there is a high risk that Germany will no longer be supplied with gas or raw materials. Now, if you're a Ukrainian, of course, EU over-reliance on Russian energy pales into comparison with the cost of human life, as it should. The UK actually proposed blocking Russia from SWIFT back in 2014, following the annexation of Crimea. Now, that didn't happen, but the threat galvanized the Central Bank of Russia into developing its own SWIFT equivalent, the SPFS. Around 400 institutions, mostly banks, make up the network, and it only works within Russia. But there have been plans to integrate the network with, yes, you guessed it, China's cross-border interbank payment system. Now, this system, the SPFS, is extremely limited. It's only operational during weekday working hours, and its messages are limited to 20 kilobytes in size. But there have been reports of expansion to countries like Turkey and Iran, as well as linking it to other countries' payment systems in China and India. By comparison, SWIFT itself functions 24-7 and allows 10 megabit messages to be transmitted. So one of the dangers of cutting Russia off from SWIFT is introducing distrust in the system amongst emerging countries. But there's also a line of thought here that challenges the hegemony of the dollar as the global reserve currency. Think about the rapid rollout of China's digital yuan and Putin's push to forge closer ties with Xi Jinping, and that's going to be a clear cause for concern in the US. Now, in February, Russia sealed a 30-year contract to supply gas to China through the power of Siberia 2 pipeline. Yes, everything really does revolve around gas, which brings us neatly to crypto. Now, Russia's finance ministry recently submitted a bill to legalize crypto investments while banning their use in payments. So, no we are not going to see crypto replace SWIFT as a way around sanctions, despite what these idiotic headlines might suggest. Wealthy oligarchs could indeed transfer their assets to Bitcoin, as suggested by Matty Greenspan of Quantum Economics. He said if a wealthy individual is concerned that their accounts may be frozen due to sanctions, they can simply hold their wealth in Bitcoin in order to be protected from such actions. Whoever was handling the OTC desk on any of those transactions, well, Good luck to you. This week, Laura Shin revealed the existence of a powerful new demixing tool to track tumble Bitcoin transactions in her Forbes article on the DAO hack. Chainalysis is becoming an increasingly visible presence in high-profile investigations. There are fewer 
and fewer places to hide in crypto, and it seems highly unlikely that Russia would voluntarily expose itself to the lack of control inherent in decentralized systems. So no, 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 no. Crypto does not offer a way around a swift disruption. What is abundantly clear is that Putin and Russia have had eight years to figure out how to circumvent this very sanction. They will have gamed it out extensively. Western governments were warned, and as Sir Tony Branton, former British ambassador to Russia, admitted on the BBC yesterday, they completely underestimated what was happening. I've been predicting this wasn't going to happen, so I'm feeling a bit stupid this morning and regretful. I thought Putin was much more cautious than he's proving to be. And the fact that this looks like a full-scale invasion of all of Ukraine, with no clear statement about whether he's going, how much he's going to end up occupying and what he's going to do with it, is even more worrying. Um, well, one can say a couple of things. First of all, we didn't take Putin seriously enough. So, look, the global economic order is being rewritten right in front of our faces. While Congress wrestles over stablecoins and decentralization, there's a real danger that the US dollar's preeminence is being dismantled at speed. And there seems to be very little any Western nation can do about it. That's it for today. If you found this helpful, please do consider subscribing, drop us a like, etc., etc. But be safe and have a great weekend. This was The Defiant.